intensity video for interval notation. Um, but to start with, I'm going to just have a little warm up, and that warm up is just reminding you about rational numbers, integers, real numbers, uh, irrational numbers, natural numbers, and so on. Um, so you're asked, place the numbers in the correct spot in the Venn diagram. So you have to, even though technically, for example, 7.21, it is a real number, you've got to place it in the smallest set possible. So negative 7.21, is it a whole number? No. So is it a rational number? Yes, because it has a terminating decimal. So that fits into this yellow section because it's not an integer, it's not a natural number, it's not an irrational number. It's still part of the real number system though because rational is a proper subset of the reals. Um, okay, so the next one, let's do 2 root 3. 2 root 3, it is a third, so it is an irrational number. It has an infinite amount of non-repeating decimals if you plug that into a calculator. 400, it's a whole number, and it's positive, so it fits into the natural number of the subset. Uh, two nice, if you plug that into a calculator, you'll get 0.2 recurring. It's not an irrational number, it's rational. It can't fit into Z or N because it's not a whole number. Square root of 2 is a third, so that can fit into irrational. 39.56, like 7.21, it's a terminating decimal, can be expressed as a fraction, like 3956 over 10,000. This little number here is 1 8th. 1 8th is also rational, so it's 0.125. Um, 37, it's natural, because it's a positive whole number. 1 half, it's a rational number, so I'll sort of pop that here. 1 half, because it's 0.5, terminating decimal. Square root of 9, think some might by mistake think it's an irrational number, but think of what the answer is. The answer is 3. So it's a positive whole number. So square root of 9 actually fits into natural numbers. 0.1284, irrational. 10 to the power of 23. It looks confusing, but if you plug it into a calculator, it's just a 1 with lots and lots of zeros, with 23 zeros at the end. So it's a positive whole number, so it's still natural. The number pi, it's got an infinite amount of non-repeating decimals, so it's an irrational number. Um, it also can't be expressed as a fraction with an integer numerator or denominator. Negative 4, it is an integer. So it's a whole number, but it's negative. Um, okay, so that's how that works so far. Now let's move on to interval notation. So I'll just zoom in a bit. Interval notation. Okay, so interval notation. So remember learning about inequalities in year nine. So I'm sure you do. Um, it's very similar. We've just got a few extra things to add to it. So if we've got this here, we have, so basically it's saying that X is greater than or equal to zero, but less than four. So if you're expressing that on a number line, You've got a closed dot at zero because it's including zero. So a closed dot means that you include that number. Whereas over here, we have an open dot. So an open dot means that you don't include that number. So you don't include that number. Which makes sense according to the set as well. Um, so see this diagram basically matches. So zero because it does include, so we've got a close up because it does include zero, and less than but not equal to four because it's an open dot and it doesn't include zero. So to write the above number line representation using interval notation for our course, that is, we would do the following. So what that means is this straight line here means the word such that. And the curly brackets around the side mean the set of all reals. So notice it's color-coded. So the purple refers to the set of all real x such that, because x such that with the line stands for x such that. x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 4. So notice it's not less than or including 4. So what's interesting is, is this set infinite or finite? And why? So infinites go on forever, like so there's no beginning or end on the number line. But a finite set <laughs> has a clear kind of beginning or end. 
so and end. So for example, this one has a clear beginning, so it's a finite set, and it also has a clear ending. So it's finite as it begins at zero, so it begins at exactly zero because it's including zero, and ends before four because it's not including four. So notice it, according to this diagram, it begins at zero because it's including zero and ends just before four. Okay, so on to the next page. How would you write this in interval notation? So looking at the diagram, it's kind of continuing. The arrow over here means it's continuing on infinitely in the forward direction, in the positive direction. What does the empty dot mean? That's right, that means that it's not including 1. So basically, x is getting, from <laughs> negative 1, x is getting bigger and bigger. So we say it's a set of x such that x is greater than, is it also including 1? Try to think about that. No, it's not because it's an empty dot. So it's greater than negative 1. So again, this translates to the set of all real x, so the set of all real x, such that, such that, so x and the line means such that, x is greater than, greater than negative 1. So this translates to the set of all real x such that x is greater than negative 1. That's how you would say that in words. Is this set finite or infinite? So have a look at the number lines, probably easy. So it is infinite. Because even though it does start <laughs> above negative 1, it continues on to infinity. So it's infinite as it continues on, let me just say roughly, continues on forever in the positive direction. So it's not finite, it's infinite because it goes on forever. There's no end. Next one, how would you write this in interval notation? So notice we've got a closed dot at 2. So remember using interval notation, we've got out the curly brackets. So you might want to open up the curly brackets. Just do a little purple. Let's get back to here. Curly brackets. And then remember I use red. So it's x such that. And then try to think what this how you would say this part with the arrow in words. So would you agree that it was x is less than and including 2? So why is it including 2? It's because we have the closed dot at 2. So a closed dot right there. So x such that x is less than or including 2. So x is less than or including 2. And then we can close brackets. So draw the curly brackets here. So again, we're asked, what does this translate to? So we have to write the whole sentence this time. So this translates to the set of all real x. Real x. So notice it's real, unless that they state something like this, x, e, n, or x, e, z. Um, assume that it's real numbers, like x, e, r. So unless they state this, something like that in the question, assume it's going to be the set of all real x. If they said x, e, n, then you'd say the set of all natural x, or the set of all integer x. Um, such that, so set of all real x, you might put a comma if you want, such that <coughs> x is less than or equal to 2. Less than or... Oops, a second. Less than or equal to 2. You might want to close the quotation marks. And also, last thing before we finish this page is the set finite or infinite, and why? So, let me hear this one. Would you agree it's infinite? So, I would agree it's infinite because from the dot, it continues on infinitely in this direction infinite as it continues on 
So the next page asks, how would you write this in interval notation? So notice you've kind of got the uh, open dots, so it's not including zero and it's not including three. Um, so, but it does go on in the neg negative direction infinitely on from zero and in the positive direction infinitely on from three. So in interval notation, you have your curly brackets, you go x, you go bracket, such that, so it's a line indicates, x such that x is, would you agree less than? So you would agree that x is less than zero. And if you look at the other part, so from here, x is greater than three. So you can have two parts and you just include the word or. The word or is important there. Ah, my nose feels really weird. That's not okay, I can't. Okay, and this translates to so what does this translate to? This translates to the set of all real x. So again, unless it states something else like x e n or x e z, then just assume it's x. I mean, it's real numbers. So translate to the set of all real x such that such that x is less than zero. Or greater than three. So we'll close that now. Um, so is this set infinite or finite? That's a very interesting question because it doesn't go on infinitely in between zero and three, but it does go on infinitely um, in the negative direction from zero and in the positive direction from three. So to some extent, we can say it is infinite. So. Let's just write that. If for some reason we change our mind later, I'll put a comment on this video. Infinite as it continues on infinitely. We've got a bit of light here, sorry. In the negative direction. Direction. From negative direction from zero. And the positive direction from three. That's something we could. Uh, okay, so what's interesting is now we've got an interesting looking number line uh, where we've got dots instead of arrows. So how would you write this in interval notation? So notice that every single point is a discrete dot. So what they mean is the exact values, like you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these are notice, integers, they're natural or natural numbers, <laughs> or positive integers you might think of them. It doesn't include the values in between. So that's why there's no arrow this time, because we're dealing with integers or natural numbers. So. How would you write this in interval notation? As we said, the dots mean that only the discrete whole number values are allowed. And notice the dots have been drawn actually on the number line. They're not sitting above the number line this time, like in the arrows. So to write this, you would write x such that, and the values are still from 0, you're starting at 0, here, up to 11. So x is greater than including zero <laughs> and less than and including 11. But what's interesting is we've noted this at the end. So we've put a comma and we've put x is an element of natural numbers. Um, try to think what's an alternative way to do this. We can also typically say these numbers are integers or probably not positive integers because it includes zero and zero is not a positive integer. So integers is safer. So we could say x is greater than or equal to zero and less than and including 11. And we can also say x is an element of integers. So you'll notice in the textbook when you do some of these exercises, they might say one answer, like x, e, n, but they might also say other answers are possible. 
Um, so let's say you would write one like this when you have dots, meaning integers or natural numbers. If they were negative numbers, then we definitely couldn't say XEN because N stands for positive, <laughs> positive integers. Okay, so now try to list the elements of the last set on the previous page. So <laughs> the elements of that set you can see was down here. It was this one here. So it would just be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So if we were asked to list the elements, notice you've got your curly brackets if you want to practice drawing them. I'll draw them here myself. Kind of do curly brackets like this. So that's how you would open your curly bracket. And the elements would just be the whole numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, finishing at 11 because it's got a closed dot on 11. There's no open dots on that diagram. Um, is this set finite or infinite? <laughs> so looking at up here, um, you'd probably agree that it's a finite set. So it's finite as the set begins at 0 and ends at 11. It has a very distinct beginning and end. It doesn't go on forever, so it's not infinite. So now try to list the elements of the following. So here we go, we've got x such that, we've got x is greater than um, and or equal to negative 2 xen. Um, okay, so thinking of that, uh, it can only be positive whole numbers. So positive whole numbers, so we can't include negative 2 or negative 1. And again, it does depend also, like, uh, does your textbook say that n is a natural number, oh sorry, 0 is a natural number or not? Our textbook doesn't really define it. So I'll just say, assuming, assuming 0 is not a natural number. Again, there's a lot of debate amongst mathematicians and textbook writers about whether zero is a natural number or not. So in my answer, I'm assuming zero is not a natural number. You might see another textbook or resource that says zero is a natural number, and it would include that. And notice I've got the dot, dot, dot to imply that it's continuing on forever. Is this set finite or infinite? And why? And it's infinite. There's not much space to write your answer. As it begins at 1 and continues on forever in the positive direction infinitely in positive direction there's not much space to handle that though so you might just want to write a shorter version of that so the next one is um, x set of x such that x is greater than negative 1 and x is e is implying that they're positive, oh no, sorry, positive, but it's whole numbers, positive and negative whole numbers. <coughs> so not including negative 1, and but it's getting greater and it has to be whole numbers. So I think that the first number in the set must be 0. And it's allowed because it's not saying positive integers, it's just saying integers, so we can include 0. It has to be whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dot, 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 dot. So you'll notice that the textbook has dot, dot, dot. And it's infinite. Similar reasons as before. We don't have much space to write why, so I'll just leave that off. But I can just tell you that it's infinite because it continues on, it begins at zero and continues on infinitely in the positive direction. Next one, we've got x. Such that x is, x is uh, greater than negative four and less than and including five. But here we're saying that x is an element of positive integers. So x is an element of positive integers. So it doesn't include 4, but it does include um, 5. <coughs> so notice because it's positive integers, we can't include negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, or 0. The first positive integer would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it includes an um, is less than 5. So that's why I've included 5 and there's no dot dot dot. And instead of a, a normal bracket, we should do a curly bracket, sorry. Is this set finite or infinite? It is finite. Um, why? 
because it begins at one and ends at five. Next thing you know, you're asked to suddenly now sketch the following number sets on a number line, like on the previous pages. So on the previous pages, so the sets that we've got to include are uh, one, two, oh, sorry, let's see, in this case, one, two, three, and four, and so on. And now for the final question. So now if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, now you're asked to sketch the following number sets, i.e. on a number line, like on the previous pages. So you'll notice now I've actually written in some number lines already, so that's just to make life a bit easier, save you having to watch me write out a number line, but you'll need to rule in the number lines yourself. Um, so going from negative 2 up to positive 5 seems okay for most of them. Um, so that just works for these particular ones. So now the first one is um, the set of x such that x is uh, greater than or equal to negative 2, but notice x is an element of natural numbers. So because it's natural numbers, we have to assume the numbers 1, 2, 3 onwards, like natural numbers that are positive whole numbers. And again, there's a lot of debate about whether or not nat the set of natural numbers includes 0. But in our textbook, we'll assume that uh, natural numbers don't include 0, but other textbooks will say that they include 0. If that changes, I'll let you know, and maybe I'll put a comment on this video. Um, so for now, yep, so therefore, and notice it's natural numbers meaning whole numbers. So we're going to draw an arrow. Instead, we draw actual dots. So starting with one, so we put a dot here, and another dot here. Of course, does that need to be that base, that line, or is not very calibrated? And dot, dot, dot. So you can see it kind of continues on. Um, and so on for this particular question. Whereas the second one, the second one is, okay, from negative one, x is greater than negative one, x is an element of integers. So greater than negative one, it can include um, negative numbers, but greater than is not including negative one. So we start at zero, because integers can include zero. So again, it's going to be dots. So we're going to start at zero, and it goes on to infinity, and actually this board's just very poorly calibrated, and so on. So it goes on to infinity. Um, whereas this bottom one, this bottom one is x such that x is greater than negative four, but less than and including five, x e r. So this is where we need to draw arrows. So we need an empty dot at negative four. Then we just need to draw a straight line between them. So this is the line tool to do that. So we'll do a line going from there to there. And then we'll draw the other one. XER. And so that is roughly how you draw these number sets on number lines.